<laughs> I don't even know. I I, I want to start with drama saying two podcasts ago that <sighs> boy was I we wrong. thought we were gonna have no a lot of content. Yep. And then we're not going to have any content going so forward. So I've been saying for a year, like, man, that last six months from June to November, we're going to be so good for the podcast. And then two episodes ago, I don't know if you were on that one. I was like, you know, it's kind of underwhelming. Like all the content is Joe Biden falling mental down. fitness. Yeah, yeah. falling down. <laughs> and I was like, you know, Trump's coming in real mellow. This is not content. Here we go. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, I could podcast for the next year about this week. I, I. So I was um, at the park and uh, we were playing baseball. Just we went, the baseball diamond was open, so we went to go throw balls. And I wasn't looking at my phone. And then finally I was like, oh, we have to go to dinner. I wonder what time it is. So I go look, notification. It says um, guns go off. You know, you know how like the, the narrative shifted noise trump yeah. fell yeah because uh, i i have cnn alert take me through mentally what you thought was happening i i did not because i follow cnn <laughs> fake news cnn right i didn't think anything happened so you thought no big deal and then i i quickly went to twitter and i was like oh shit this guy got shot and that was the it, that was like i'm gonna just fast forward before we get into the details I've never, the only time I've ever watched Fox News is during election days because I just want to hear the perspective of the other side. I've watched it for two straight days. I literally did not click on CNN once last night. You can't. And I went straight to Fox News and I was like, I want to hear that side of the story now because the fact that it said he fell and whatever or like shot, sa loud bangs. That's what it said. Loud bangs. Right. And one said Trump um, helped off stage after he fell. Yes. And so that's when I, so I didn't know what was going on too much. I just saw the Twitter. I get home and then I go to my wife. And I'm like, is this true? Trump got shot. She goes, yes. And I was like, turn on, I turned on the TV and then I obviously have little kids like, oh, who's shooting? And I was like, great. I can't even turn it on. Right. So I run upstairs and I start watching the news and then I start following what's happening on social media. And it is like this, this really scary part about the whole experience. First, that someone died. That's great. Two people died. The shooter and a bi innocent bystander who was 50 years old, like, and then I think protecting the someone family. else got injured. Right? Two people Two injured, more, yeah. stable yeah. condition. Just that in itself is insane. I thought the most insane thing ever was the instant reaction of people. As a society, yeah. we're f so fucking deranged. Because we they weren't, uh, they were just standing there? No, 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 no. Not, oh, not, the reaction of like social media. Social media. Mm. It went completely haywire within a minute. Yeah. A minute. But it would have happened either way. No, I understand. I'm just saying we, so that, we can't I think even the point, get, we're beyond thoughts and prayers. No, no, no. No, no, there's no thoughts and prayers. <laughs> no, no. no one cared about the fact that someone it was, died. It was like straight to meme generating. Generating and staged and it's fake and just madness, conspiracy shit. Yeah. Which is, this, which is really interesting because during COVID was the first time where people were vilified, the average person was vilified for making any bold claims. Vaccine, right. oh, you can't say it's from China. You right. can't, all every claim, you were considered a social pariah if you made those claims publicly. Yeah. Here, it now was, they've all proven to be right. Yeah, no, but so I now think, there's I think no everything's trust. out the window, meaning that everyone's willing to say whatever they want to. Yeah. So like the Overton window has widened. Well, yeah. And I think to D's point, I really do think I'm kind of joking, but not really. I think um, so many things were treated as terrible things to say during COVID and ended up being true. Yeah. And so I think now it's like anything goes. Yeah. We have a resident pessimist in here, Zach. Yeah, Zach Welcome. White is with us. Zach Welcome White. to America. Hello. Welcome, Zach. Um, I think what D said is like really important to sort of dig into because... 
uh, mainstream media basically like guided you in the wrong direction. Yeah. Um, and instantly you could get all of the sort of correct information. Maybe it's like extreme on one end or the other, but there's like more directionally correct information on Twitter. Yeah. That's up to you as a intelligent sure. person to at least click okay is this a meme or is it like a real thing yeah. right <laughs> right but i think that it like kind of goes to show how important twitter is when things oh, like yeah. this in the world happen like if you're just relying on cnn or even fox or whatever like it can be so um just like put you in the wrong direction of what's what's actually happening and so i think elon actually buying twitter will kind of go down as one of the most at least for like um, democratic values and stuff, one of the most important buys so in American important. history. I agree. Um, but I think that this, I mean, there's like a, a billion different things we can go into here. What I think is like the most interesting is how quickly um, sort of like the democratic side, especially on social media, to your point, went to like extreme conspiracy theories yeah, that a which, lot of people would basically only sort of like associate with the right maybe right. In previous like there they went everything. so far aggressive oh yeah there's like i heard like putin was behind it i heard um like you know this is just like a fake shot like they did there's there's like a variety of like misinformation even being i saw I, I saw the email i don't know if it's been verified to be real yeah it is i know Reed the guy Hoffman's who yeah yeah junior person not even it's his chief political officer oh jesus i mean Christ. the left yeah. has become everything they hate about the right correct yeah it's wild. They're even more conspiratorial than the right. Like, think about this. Wait, what, think what, about was, what did Reed Hoffman say? Sorry. Basically, Reed Hoffman is a chief political officer, as a lot of these billionaires do. Yeah. They like are trying to orient their public perception in, in politics in a specific way. Reed Hoffman's right after the Trump shot, he basically said, hey, guys, we need to keep an open mind that this probably was Trump. Or, or sorry, uh, Putin. This was probably some sort staged. of like staged it's Russian staged. disinformation campaign to basically reinforce like Republicans and, and their interests, basically. I saw Reed Hoffman and Peter Thiel had a standoff at Sun Valley. Well, he also like but didn't he this, say like we need to kill him or we need to eliminate him or something? He's yeah. So some what the, the exact words were: um, Trump was basically saying to Reed, "Hey, like thank you for all of your donations. You basically turned Trump into a martyr." And then Reed came back and said, "I wish I actually turned him into a martyr." And that's the other thing that like seemed, you ca people callously say things about killing him all the time. Totally. Which is not we would never allow that of any candidate ever. Correct. And, and it's like a dog whistle. Yeah. Like, like a lot of the sort of left's criticism of the right is that right. they're constantly dog whistling to very specific groups to like take action that's incongruent with democratic values. But guys, like just imagine this for one second. Imagine when Donald Trump was president. Yeah. Joe Biden running against him gets shot in the ear. Yeah. And the speech that Biden gave. I mean, if Trump gave that speech as a response to Biden getting shot, it would be like, Toast. you are encouraging. And then if all of Trump's supporters on TikTok are making videos like, damn, he missed. What? He fucking missed? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. who misses? It, you People would be imploding. No, wait, wait, hold on, hold on. You, you heard Biden's would, speech, right? Yeah. It's terrible. I thought it, was, I thought it was great. I thought it was horrendous. How do you think it was horrendous? I thought it was... Um, I actually thought he basically said... This is not any place for politics. You cannot use violence. Let's go to the ballot box if you disagree with us. He also said battle box. He did say Two battle times. box. I, look, I thought, this is what I'm that's saying. That's what he's meaning. He's meaning that. This is what I'm signaling to psychos. No, this is, this is my easiest break. way to critique this, it. That's bullshit. This is my, look, it's bullshit. Number one, if that was Trump, people would have been like the amount, it would have been fine people on both sides, that thing times a million. This is my point is... And to try to like, because I don't want to argue with you about it because we, we just see it differently. And, and I don't think an argument is going to solve it. It wasn't a protest that got out of hand. It wasn't some windows that got smashed. He got shot in the head yeah. with an AR-15. He was like a hair away from dying. Right. I don't think the speech reflected the severity of that. Yeah. So I think what would was, you want him to say? I would want him to have a much more... He almost has to like have an aggressive tone to his party, and even say but he's a registered own. Republican. No, but you come on. We, but if you if you look into it, his last so donation. Listen, 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 no, 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 no. Okay, come then on, what's why the, you keep coming on? Then what's the? No, then you're what's not what's listening. The, listening. He also come donated on. to the to the Democrats on um, his Biden's, most re recent right. donations to Democratic PAC. Here's my point. Yeah. This is, let me just end with this, and I don't want to argue with you. Is I think it needed to be like this has gotten out of hand. We have used rhetoric. Both sides have used rhetoric that is completely unacceptable. I think that's what his speech said. No, 
I, I listened what do you to it. Think? I think the one thing that he omitted, which was sort of glaring to me, is that he has been proactively preventing Trump from getting beefed up social, uh, Secret Service. Mm -hmm. um, so he has shot down multiple requests for them to uh, bump up Trump and his family's Secret Service budget, basically, to hire more people. And, um, you know, that was like completely omitted by him. Like, I think that there's probably some culpability on his end to say, hey, like, I understand that we're at, at against each other, but like safety is most paramount to making sure that these are like fair and democratic elections. And it seemed like he was basically towing the party line for the Democrats and saying this I is mean, not political violence is like, you know, it was so, so I like, think, I think I mean, uh, open secret AI service is, is double, right? It's local police plus secret service. The what? It's local police plus secret service. Right. At these rallies. Yes. At right. these rallies. Mm -hmm. It's, it's double. Right. So they failed on both sides. Yes. Right. I agree. I think all around yeah, it was that, a failure. That I think everyone agrees but with. But this is my only point. He still someone shot at him. My only no, point is if fine. Trump... That's fine. I mean, I'm not... And that's not fine. Sorry. It's evident someone shot at him, but they didn't stop him. Well, that's another set of then things. Then we can do the conspiracy theories on that. A hundred percent. I think... And we should talk about that. That's already sure. going... I could do the whole podcast on that. <laughs> yeah. I, I think the <laughs> fact that like... There are people screaming that that's him. Put it like you this. saw the guy listen, at BBC. Listen, uh, one second. If if there are people in the stands saying his name and recognizing Secret Service, probably saw that one minute earlier. You're talking about Mary Joe found someone faster than the people professionally looking right. to look at these people from all fucking angles all day. That doesn't make sense to me right. unless it's just like the most incompetent. They, they literally said, Trump, you can have Secret Service, but we're giving you our worst. Yeah. Literally. Well, did you see worst. the video of the three chicks like scrambling and trying <laughs> yeah. to holster the gun? Well, do you see, I know, they like, might have given him the worst. Do you see what the head of Trump's Secret Service detail used to do? Before? PepsiCo. She used to guard. Isn't she the head of the Secret Service? She, well, uh, his, no, of his detail. His, his uh, detail. Yeah. And she guards. She used to guard PepsiCo facilities. And Elon tweeted like, "Oh, she was used to. She went from Guard protecting Cheetah. Cheetos to protecting Donald Trump, basically." I mean, here, here, this is really my point, and mainly for you, Anand, is I'm not saying that like Biden or the Democrats caused this, right? Like, this is a crazy guy and whatever. But what I am saying is that I just want things to be fair, and that the night before, a few nights before, um, Biden said, um. We need to stop worrying about the debate and put Trump in a bullseye. Now, I'm not saying that he meant. Oh God, you're doing the. This, right is, saying the this is my point. Drama. This Jesus is my Christ. point. I'm not saying that he said go shoot him. I'm saying if Trump had said that, and this happened, the crazy outrage towards Trump claiming that Trump motivated this shooter yeah. would have been ridiculous. And I'm saying the same people that go cry, Trump is a bad man, Trump is inspiring, they're doing it. Yeah. That's what I'm He's saying. He's just not as charming about it. Yeah. <laughs> it's not as funny. <laughs> yeah. And, and that's, that's just, I just hate when like you, the left has become everything that they, I mean, can you imagine, guys, a guy in a fucking MAGA hat yeah. shooting Joe Biden on the campaign trail while Trump is president? Yeah. It would have been like, been this in the streets, guy yeah. is destroyed. I mean, his gang of, and now it's just like, well, I, we can't really call it an assassination attempt yet. You know, Let's go to the battle box. I, I know Zach's going to disagree with me, but yeah. no one wants to talk about wh why can he just easily access an AR-15? I know, but that's, that's, here's my point. I agree with you, but <laughs> like that's the larger point. I agree no, with you, I but the storyline, I think it's the fact that people think it's okay to go shoot a, you don't president. think it's okay that this 20 year old kid can, access that to problem is not going to be solved. I it's think that's not. a whole no, that, other, that's, that's another a, that's, podcast. Let's do that one on Wednesday. Yeah. I know, it's, but that's like a lazy, so lazy answer. Well, it's what? not going to be solved. This kid can get an AR-15. Right, but not. we could, we could have that debate too. I mean, you're not, you can't. I think that's going to be much harder than just like passing a law or something. People have the guns. The guns are out. There's a whole, out there. We could have a whole discussion about why that's so difficult. But I, the point that and it's I, his dad's gun. Right. But the point that I will bring back to you is the storyline is it's all Republicans and MAGA guys with guns. And now you have a guy that looked like a fucking MAGA guy. He looked like everything you would make fun of, of, yeah. uh, you know, whatever. Uh, 
We don't know the what left is. is the shooter. Yeah, I think the irony is that the AR-15 uh, ultimately kind of... Okay, here's my question for you. Why hasn't Biden made any progress on guns? Well, you can't. Why? Republicans won't vote. But he had control before. No, he had control. He, you know, he's never had both houses. What are you talking about? So my point is who's... Then, yeah, then so how's it get solved? Then what's the lazy argument? No one's ever going to change the law. It's not a lazy well, argument. No, the, the, the lazy argument is why won't Republicans say, hey, we should have gun control. The but other side of this, though, is this could also have been accomplished with a hunting rifle. It could have also been accomplished with like a variety of different but weapons. But how platforms. easy was it for this 20-year-old kid to but get it wasn't an even his. It wasn't even it his It was his dad's gun. He just took it. Yeah. But right. so, so that's like not a fault of how federally guns accessible guns are. That's poor gun safety in the household. I think it's like two, two separate issues. Because you're never going to get past. This is my... It's just we could do this for hours. You're never going to get past. You could get like better background checks, people without mental health problems, blah, blah, blah. But the issue of you're not going to get like banning AR-15s, I don't think. The issue of that kid getting a gun, his dad, for all we know, would have passed a background check, would have passed all the stuff and the kid went and grabbed it. I just don't know that. I think that's a tough road to go down as opposed to the immediate issues. Look, my main immediate complaint is just, can we just start playing fair and treat, understand that I, if this happened the other we're, way. We're minimizing the fact that a 20 year old kid can get an AR-15 yeah, from but, his dad. You know, and I then think you're minimizing the, the fact the that like, the president. Democrats have become exactly like Republicans. So no one is no morally He's better than the other. He's not a Democrat or Republican. No, what I'm talking, talking about? about the reaction, the way people talk about no, but Trump? talk about the actual action. I know the fact that anyone can just get an AR-15 and I know, shoot that's, at a president. That's a Democrat argument. I've seen everyone make it. That's a Democrat argument. Right. That's not a Democrat argument. That's actually a reality argument. What are you talking about? That's what Democrats are publicly saying. It's about gun Who control. Who are Democrats saying? A lot of Democrats have come out and said about gun control in the last four, 24 hours. They use this as that talking point to say this is actually about gun safety would have solved this problem or gun control would have solved this problem. The, the, the real fact was I was watching a video of uh, a classmate of this kid and the guy was like, this guy got bullied like fucking crazy right. in high school. Somehow he's a 20 year old with no Twitter, no TikTok, no Instagram. Right. I mean, which is really odd in itself. Sure. Like that does not check out at all. Suspicious. That's very suspicious. suspicious. And so I think there's a lot of questions because there's a lot of 20 year olds out there that have access to AR-15s and he's the one that's out here trying to shoot the Don't president. Don't you think that's a problem? I think. I Look, you, the best way for you're, me to answer you're, you're, it. You're, we're not, this is not the gun rights podcast episode. No, but it's the, but it's the facts episode. I know, but I think the, the reason why I, I don't like that train is because that is its own really big, I believe, unsolvable issue. I believe that you can and should have more thorough background checks. I wish that guns weren't an issue in this country. I do. But I think it's such a part of this country that I don't think you can really solve it. So I think that like we have to kind of put it away for a minute and come back to what happened, which is I, I just think that like you can't. How long can you call this guy Hitler and say he's a serious threat to our country and he's a this and a that and a whatever. And then when someone tries to take him out, not accept the same blame you would ask. Because Trump, Trump, Trump to you take. know, is getting prosecuted for January 6th for inciting. You could make the argument Democrats have incited violence against a former president or similar to Alex Jones, who said Sandy Hook is a hoax. You have people People losing on TikTok saying that it was staged and fake, but someone died. So what do you mean someone died? Like 26 kids died. No, no, no. I'm He's talking, talking about, about the, the, yesterday. Yeah. Okay. What happened yesterday are coming out and saying yesterday was a hoax, but someone died. Two people died. So if you're going to, if we're going to play fair, then everyone who's claiming that it was fake and people died still, then you should go after them. It's just, you just. Who's you, claiming yesterday was fake? A Sorry. lot of people are. Uh, uh, at the very least, what are you talking about? At the yes, very least, staged. A lot staged. of people. I know that was the initial Twitter response. Still is. Like, type still is. Stage. Trump stage. See still how many is. kids are going nuts. Posting and, it. and specifically from the left. Yeah. Um, and my point is like, I do think that, look, Joe Biden ran on uniting the country and getting rid of. Turning the temperature of, down. 
That was and, the whole thing. And getting rid of extreme MAGA fucking and all this shit. The, 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 the temperature has not been this high since the 70s. When, when was the last assassination attempt? Nixon. Reagan, yeah. Or Reagan or Reagan? Reagan. Reagan, yeah. Reagan. Yeah. Reagan yeah. 70s? When was yeah, 70s. Yeah. When he was running. No, it was yeah. the 80s, yeah. Right. So that literally the temperature has not been higher. And I just think like, I don't know. I I, I really feel like I, as a Democrat my whole life, feel confused. I feel like, wait a minute, you guys aren't who you say you were. You yeah. don't treat things fairly. You don't, you, I think that you cut like, look at the end of the day, has Trump done anything to show us that he is reminiscent of Hitler? Has Trump done anything to show that he truly um, intends on becoming a dictator and uh, never leaving office and all this stuff? I, I think he just doesn't want to go to jail. He wants to make a couple bucks along the way, cut some right. interest rates, and he's back to golfing. But it's like when you when even, even, even and, and you can point to January sixth and say, yeah, January sixth. But when you look at what he said on January sixth, now yes, he should have called people off quicker. He should have done all this stuff. He should have. But he did say we're going to march down to the Capitol peacefully, and he did. He, it's not. We we've turned it into. This guy was a murderous dictator with a murderous mob and he will never appreciate it just wasn't that. And and where's the responsibility? I th I think the um the interesting thing is is that the this is why I think people are getting more um ramped up and amped up about it is if you look like historically across like kind of just people who just did not follow status quo and politics in America and abroad. Yeah. They usually don't make it. Right. <laughs> they, just, they just don't. Right. Right. Like just in our own country's history, like Ke yeah. Kennedy's were like revolutionary. Right. And they weren't allowed. Abraham Lincoln, revolutionary, wasn't allowed. Right. Like anyone that it was in, trying to impact change. I'm not saying this guy is trying to impact change positively for anyone but himself, but he is trying to impact change. And so, and look, and, and, and what happens is when you have people like, I was trying to think if I'm, I went full conspiracy in my head of like, who would actually want this? I actually, the only person I could think of was one person. It was Zelensky. That's one, but how about the FBI, there's the CIA? Putin, there's Putin. How about Putin? Putin, he needs to shut the board down. It's great. But the FBI, the CIA, every weapons manufacturer. So if you believe the deep state, you can go down a pretty deep rabbit hole. I don't know how you couldn't believe the deep state on some level when Weekend at Bernie's has been running the country for four so years. So yeah. you saw the 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 shooter like pointed a rifle at the cop that was trying to stop him. Yeah. What and happened? then seconds later. Oh, there's a, yeah, I, the, I saw the report. The report. No video of it. Sorry, right? no video. Right, right. And he ran away, apparently. Yeah. I mean, we don't know, but that's the report. I just look, I just wish it was fair. I think. I, I really uh, have a lot of sympathy for the attendee that died. Obviously, the shooter that died, he should be killed. Right. Um, that's like really sad. But I just don't get how this happens. And even Candace Owens, who was a right wing political operative, right. went on a podcast and saying, I've been around presidents. I've done, you know, the searches and whatever, the screening. Yeah. There's no way that that roof was not yeah. checked. So how did that happen? I, th I think it's actually like a, a sincere failure on the uh, part of the Secret Service. And yeah. that's like something I don't think enough people are actually paying attention to. Like, it's like th there's a good chance this kid was just a piece of shit. Yeah, Lone Ranger. That's fine. Likely, he went out and then Secret Service. And I mean, incompetence. I mean, how many stories we have all we saw about? the video? If any of us became billionaires, I don't know if I'd hire any one of those motherfuckers to guard me. No fucking chance. I mean, I'd hire the first you, guy. Do you, we go out when you go out at night and you go see Drake or right. Kendrick Lamar. You see a billionaire, right? Let me tell you, none of them the security guards look like that. And, and the problem is, is can you? You can't. It just doesn't make sense. You would have those people protecting 
But are you talking the about sec- the three chicks? Because there was like there was a couple like <laughs> they Navy were looking all great. The the one of the couple. one of the big the, things. You see the picture of the woman high ducking. Yeah, you're, you're talking about the yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. How, that's how, unbelievable. How did that roof go unchecked? I don't no, think I, that it went unchecked. I think that it there's like I think that they were surveying. I, I watched a, a U.S. Navy um, SEAL sniper because we discussed this, and he said that they were probably protecting like a 270 um, degree arc. So like if somebody had happened to crawl up there, they're not just sitting pointing at a specific spot. They're like surveying, surveying, surveying. And then the second that they heard the gunshots, they basically tracked the target and then shot it. So I think but I do think that there's like I think that the most culpability here is um, is in the Secret Service, probably. And a lot of people, especially on the right, have been saying that it's like a DI, DEI function of like the Secret Service. Like I mean, that whole string issue seemed pretty <laughs> DEI. Yeah, when, when she was like fumbling. Yeah, like when she couldn't gun. find her holster. I was, I yeah. was like, this, yeah. is this a joke? And yeah. the chick popping but, out and putting on her sunglasses like a movie character and like but also if you're like, and this is like what what, I, what really worries me is like, is if you were like a, an actual sort of like nation state enemy of the United States, you look at that Secret Service performance <laughs> right. and you're like, oh, it's you're so like, much easier than we actually yeah, thought. Yeah, we used to not think that was possible. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now. And like some random 20 year old with like, you know, a pretty, pretty average shot, like right. is, is doing what we've been trying to do for years. Right. You know, yeah. I mean, and we've been hearing about the Secret Service, like being this untouched, like. No, the like secret the Secret Service, service. Insane. like it, you have to have the same shooting old, standards. If he had a better shot, Trump would be dead. Or not a better, Trump it's like, shifted his head at the last second. Shifted his head. Yeah. yeah. That's, I also watched some sniper videos <laughs> yeah. and they said that literally the five, per, five yeah, mile an hour wind yeah. Yeah, could have what, been the difference. But you know what's and like his a, little head turn. Another big failure on the part of the like. And by the way, just service. real before you go yeah. on, this guy couldn't make it into the high school rifle club. Correct. I saw that video too. Who, the shooter? Yes. He got rejected. But you know what's also like kind of sus is like there's a massive flag above Donald Trump and like in every sniper course ever, they always have flags so you can adjust to the, the wind. wind. So like there's this massive right, like right. like beacon of like how you should aim above his head. And yeah. then he's just like I mean, luckily there. that guy didn't make it in on the team. He probably would have learned that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I, I really do think it's like uh I, I, I don't know how conspiratorial I genuinely feel about it. Like, I don't think it's like some other nation state. Trying no, to I like, actually think we're just a rogue kid. But I also think that that's the most obvious p- thing to think. And yeah. like whenever there's like sincere political violence in places that don't, it, it's not like normal for that to happen. You always have to wonder, is there like some outside influence somewhere? I just yeah. think like we've kind of joked about it for a while of like. They tried to do the lawsuits. They've tried everything. They're going to. Well, you know that say, that saying him. that's going around is like first they try to first they try to cancel you, right? Yeah. And if that doesn't work, they try to put you in jail, right? Yeah. And if that doesn't work, they try to kill you, right? Yeah. yeah. They try to take all of his money, yep. Yeah. And then you got to try to kill him. And if you're well, they're trying to put him in jail for the Stormy Daniels stuff, yeah. right? Yeah. And my point is like, look, I I don't even want to go down that rabbit hole once again. Could be a whole another podcast. I'd love to do it, but like, it makes sense. And if you're gonna do it, that's you're gonna make it look like rogue kid. Yeah. Then you shoot him, it's over. I think the, the the other thing is So wait, the 20 year old kid is being He's Lee Harvey Oswald. Supported by the CIA. That's a possibility. That I'm willing to entertain if anyone has a good that like he like you're gonna get killed, but no. you get to shoot Donald Trump. No, but well, then no, they but don't there's, tell them that. There, there's ways that you can like influence people enough. Where you like, you know, find them a community online where they feel supported enough that that idea is like viable in their heads. But that 20 year old knows he's dying. No, they don't. No, he doesn't. He had a car full of bombs with a detonator. He, he was thought, about to head somewhere else. Right he thought after he was going to wreak havoc. I mean, look, he I don't think, think it's, was I don't die. think it's safe to say that you're thinking very rational <laughs> for someone who's climbing a roof and shooting at the president. I, I don't think his rationale of how that would play out was exactly sound. He probably thought, I'm going to be a hero. So if you had to. Do uh, kind of a number of potential outcomes, right. meaning one, CIA told the 20 year old kid to go off him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Two, he's, he's just, just a, a lone wolf. Yeah. He's yeah. just a lone wolf. Mm-hmm. And three, the Democrats put him up to it. Or four, there was like some foreign nation state. That oh, like, yeah, three. Yeah, yeah. Sure. I mean, I think the, uh, my personal opinion is the wild 98% is crazy kid incompetence from Secret Service. But I think it's possible. Anything's possible. 
I mean, I think if you pull on the thread of why people would want that to happen, it becomes like really interesting. Like, for instance, if if Trump dies, that leaves like a very sincere, massive gaping hole of like who would fill his place. It would, it's very likely Biden would win in that scenario. Right. Because it would be a power vacuum of all of these like subpar Republicans trying to fight for that space. So that's like one one area. Two is like, um, you know, some foreign nation state might want Trump dead because they can say it was like an Ill- illegitimate election. And a lot of people would probably feel that way if like Trump randomly got shot right near the end and then they had to put up another candidate. There's like a, a decision tree like that's really big of like what are the interesting reasons here. But I do think that there's like a greater than zero chance that like he was put up to it in some way, shape or form or, or well, from either side potentially. Right. There's Republicans in the Republican Party that really hate Trump, too. I think there's people that both parties I think there's a chance here that Trump is way more, and I'm not saying like in a good way, or I'm, I'm this isn't a pro-Trump thing exactly, but like, I think there's a chance he's pissing off way more people than we realize. No, no, yeah, that I, I think Republicans included, totally. yes. foreign nations. Yes. The I drain the swamp a, is like yeah. actually really scary to people who hold power. Like, yeah, power. Yeah, yeah. I think definitely like the foreign governments because he's so unpredictable. Yeah, don't know how he's gonna. You know, perform right, but and I, think, how is he I mean, just domestically, I think like from like uh, Pelosi to you want a known quantity in government, and he's not a known quantity. No, and I think he's not only n- not known, he's he's anti. You know, like when he, he's he's outspoken about the FBI and the CIA and the and getting out of all the wars and doing all the things. And if you don't know if that guy's such a loose cannon, you don't know what he's going to do. He's going to get in there and first day he's going to expose the JFK docs and so the CIA did it. And then he's going to fucking pull out of all the wars and then he's going to fire, uh, dismantle the FBI, the CIA. He's going to fucking expose that Putin, uh, will gladly get out of the war. And this has all been a fucking blah, blah, blah. Like the, he, probably the most wanted to be killed person on the planet earth. Yeah, because because by the most people capable of yeah, doing, and like, also his all of his insiders went to jail, right? So who wants to be his insider now? A lot of people. Well, yeah, there's another. There's, there's a whole enough. Don't worry about like, that. Sign me up. Close to power is there's mo- nothing. It's almost better than being powerful, being close to it. But if you're really conspiratorial, it is kind of like his stated purpose the first time he ran was he wanted to like dismantle the deep state. I didn't, he didn't put it in those words specifically, but he basically said he wanted to drain the swamp, remove all the interests and power that sort of affect things. He's called out the deep state, like by definition. And I think that if you're, if you're somebody in those areas, that's like the scariest thing possible because a lot of people say that and then do nothing. He's somebody that kind of is likely to probably do something right at the very least. And so I just think that there's like a, a, a million incentives from very powerful people. And you've seen this before with like the Jeffrey Epstein thing, right? Like it's like people, if you want somebody dead, there's like a million ways to do it and a million ways to sort of pass the blame on to other people. Right. And so th- there's like, I'm sure there's a variety of people in power who have the means to make something like this happen that would want it to happen. And it's just it, whether or not it was this or not. What, and, it, and, what does it take? Hopping on Discord and fucking talking to this loser? Or just being on like a, like specific Reddit forums right. or like Telegram groups or whatever. But I'm saying to coerce, coerce little uh, whatever his name was. To influence a 20-year-old that's like, by all intents and purposes, not a very, like, it's he, not hard. he was just like a normal, normal right. guy who lived in the middle of nowhere, Pennsylvania. Right. Like, it doesn't take, it actually takes a lot less than you think to radicalize these people to a point where they. Yeah, I mean, it happens all over the world in other countries where kids are getting radicalized in all kinds of ways to do insane shit. Think about it. Peak Al Qaeda kids were being martyrs every well, day. ISIS yeah. too, right? Yeah. ISIS, all those things. And so it, I think, I think it's pretty hard, but it's also strange to me that there wasn't like immediately when somebody like bombs the Boston marathon or whatever, but like does, you know, some of these heinous terroristic acts, like you always have access to like a manifesto, an entire online social media right. yeah. footprint, right. like within the same day, you can right. learn everything about them, where they went to high school, where they were like in high school. Yeah. There's been like very little information that has come out about this person. I That's think. actually kind of scary. Yeah. But, and, and, just seemed- and who is not sharing that information? No, it's not who's not sharing. It's that anyone can just be radicalized at the moment. I think no, that that's I mean, true. But, but there's no, we don't know anything about this. But we have kid. no context to his radicalization, which seems odd to me. Yeah. Because if there were, if there was something obvious where it was like, oh, he was in R slash like fuck Donald Trump, you know, every day for the last 300 days, mm-hmm. then you could kind of point and be like, okay, there's like some sort of pattern and like method to the madness here, like understandable. Right now we have absolutely 
very, like we have zero context. And it's like, it's also interesting that he's like a registered Republican, but the last thing that he donated to was a Democratic That's super PAC. That's a big psyops. That's what right. I'm saying. Like, it's almost like <laughs> it was- They're like, fuck, he donated. Like, how are we going to cover this up? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's like, I feel like there's like enough things that are odd to say the least, given the context of other people that have done things like this, Right. that there could be other forces at work. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, and given the context that I don't believe there is any person on this earth that more capable of killing someone people desire to kill or yeah. desire to not be In running power. for president. I, I yeah. think what Zach is pointing to is actually very interesting mm -hmm. that he's saying eff effectively he didn't just decide to get on the roof and kill Trump. Well, no, he's just exploring that it's a non-zero possibility and here's all the reasons why. I still, I mean, I don't know what Zach thinks. I still think the majority likelihood is Lone Ranger. Lone Ranger, crazy kid, incompetent Secret Service. How many times have we seen when something goes down, people end up being more incompetent than we thought? But, I mean, just look at Copa America, the game that's happening right now. I wanted to watch it. 5 p.m. Stupid stadium people let everyone in. Yeah, I saw that. Right. Didn't have tickets. Right. Incompetence is very prevalent in American society. I'm, in, I'm gonna, at the highest levels. Yeah. I'm going to introduce a new razor to you guys, okay. which is Hanlon's razor. Have you ever heard of this? I've heard of it, yes. What's Hanlon's? Ha never attribute... Uh, Never attribute to malice what could easily be attributed to stupidity. So if it's right. like, oh, okay, I right. like it. you can basically like if something if you're if you're thinking that something is happening because of a specific purpose, it's much more likely that the people behind everything were just too stupid to right. notice that it was going to happen. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know. I think that my only thing is like in these kinds of moments, I think like the most obvious answer is almost never the actual answer. like if it's so clear to all of us that it was probably like a lone ranger and secret secure secret um, right. service right. acting poorly like that that just too easy it's too, it's it, it's it's just too easy the, okay so just to just to move on from that cuz we, we should come back to it but the ear gets grazed right guy i mean geez. takes a dive secret service comes up <sighs> Greatest this picture guy. of all time. I mean, I, 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 uh, I, I watched that right when I got home and he was like, fight, fight, fight. I was like, oh my God, that's it. It's over from like, that is the most American thing. It is so crazy. It's like when you think about like revolutionary war type shit. But do you realize <laughs> what are the chances? Just think about this. This, this had me like feeling so mind blown yesterday. Yeah. What are the chances someone tries to kill him? It's not that the bullets nearly miss and he ducks. It hits him. Yeah. And then he gets up with a bloody face yeah. and has the presence of mind to fist pump, but, fight, fight, fight. Well, like, it shows that he's like, what? he's like a consummate television professional. Yes. Like he, he, like. He knows doing, that was, that was. From, and yeah, scene. He knew. As, yeah. he, as soon as he was down there, you knew he was like, oh, this is. This the, is it. We this is like, it. I know I'm not dying. Could it's, you imagine if you took a, an AR-15 to the ear, like your thought would be. Did that hit me the in the head? Am I dying? Get is me that, the fuck out of here. Is that probably, give me yeah. the fuck out of here. How bad is it? I don't know. That's where everyone thought people thought it was staged. I'm like, no, you don't understand. This guy's a sociopath. Yeah. He, he got <laughs> hit and he was like, he's like, money. I'm getting it. elected. This is my chance. <laughs> I just got elected. <laughs> I mean, it is so crazy. And, and he played a round of golf today. He did. Yeah. Yeah. Is that true? Is that true? Yes, it, it yeah, is. There are videos totally of him. True. Yeah, yeah. And then he's on. He's already landed in Milwaukee. For yeah, he the posted. RNC. I'm safely arrived in Milwaukee. I mean, this because the Republican I, National Convention starts Tuesday. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So he has to be there. I mean, it's just funny when the when the question about our current president is like a. Uh, can he walk up the stairs? Yeah, like a sort of like a like cognitive a, ability. Yeah. yeah, or like like a fight. Does he have yeah. any fight in him? And then you have this guy who's <laughs> yeah. shot in the head and fight, fight, and then golfing and fuck. It's just I, insanity. I, it, I I've never seen it. It was it was so like fascinating watching on social media. Like all these people, are like I've been hiding. I've been a Trump supporter for five years. Yeah, I live in Silicon Valley. Fuck that. From this day onwards, I'll always yeah, this wear my Trump out. hat. And I was like, whoa. This brought him the, out. The momentum. He, if if I'm his campaign manager, just shut the fuck up, and you may win forty seven states. But, but you know did you good? send a, a a link that he's leading in the polls now, Biden? You well, said that was a, one NBC pool said that this is why we know it's fake because put it like this in investing 
in public markets, it's the most obvious thing. Yeah. Right. It, a year and a half ago, everyone, you know, your friends were talking about NVIDIA and people, you know, you would have been early. In December, Nancy Pelosi puts a huge call option on NVIDIA, right? It's it investing is quite simple. Yeah. You follow the the vibe, the momentum, and you always win. It is. It's it's not that much different, right? Like if you were a year ago in VC and you invested in AI, you look like a hero. Right, right, right. And so similarly, what's happening now is all this momentum has gone to Trump publicly, which we've never seen this before for this guy. No one, the amount of public. I mean, how could you? Can it's you, the most uh, iconic. Yeah. It's so Can crazy. you look up the 2023 March NVIDIA price? Also, like, I don't know if it, there's a way that you can sort of track this stuff in a set, like faux public markets way, which is there's these like betting prediction markets where you can yeah. bet on political futures. Yeah. And, and Trump's. I trust the, that more than anything. I yeah. do, too, because it's like a free and open market where people are like marking, making each yeah. other. 70% was the the chances that Trump wins like 10 minutes after he got shot. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and I think the reaction yeah. to it has been so positive that. It now it's now fully publicly acceptable, one hundred percent. You yeah. know, it, I would say like seventy five percent of Trump supporters felt comfortable talking about it publicly. Now it's like ninety five. But this guy's gonna crush. Apparently, he rewrote his whole RNC speech he's to be to. about unity. Yeah. yeah, and he's gonna fucking. This guy is a master marketer. Yeah, you give him that image to work with. Yeah, and he is going to. I mean, that picture is gonna win a Pulitzer. Like. Oh, when I mean, he's under the flag, like yeah, I mean, uh, what a shot! It's yeah. just the chances of the bullet missing him were so big. The chances of it hitting him were close. Yeah, it fucking did the perfect thing. Yeah, to give him a bloody face and a fist yeah, pump. Fist. <laughs> it's so crazy. I I could not believe just the image, the picture, right? Like you get that. Then all of a sudden you you see this like tidal wave of people and their support. And then now, like when I look at the polls, who are you polling? Well, they're polling landlines. Yeah. Most I mean, yeah. major polling, ma most major polls that they look at and report on are calls to landlines. Right. Which is like irrelevant though. It's basically you're only calling people 50 and above. Yeah. You know? You're, yeah. You're they not, don't even you're, know this happened. Yeah. And They're so like, oh, I heard there was fireworks and Trump fell down. <laughs> I'm That's what Biden. CNN said. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you only I'm watch Biden. CNN, you don't think anything happened. Yeah. You don't even know that the guy Which is crazy. <laughs> Which is actually crazy. Can I ask crazy. you guys a question? Can we just maybe, if you're interested, play this out? Yeah. What happens if he got hit and died, got shot in the head on stage? I feel like in certain cities in this country right now, people are killing each other. Oh, yeah. it's burnt, burnt to the ground. Yeah. yeah, especially on the heels of the RNC. Like, I don't think civil war, I think that's a big word. I think that there's a lot of, it's like kind of like the BLM era, but then sure. people come and fight with them and they're shooting. I'm not, you would, you would get George Floyd of a different flavor. Yeah, Nothing's right. happening now. I mean, there's enough to give you a case of now psycho. No, because the, now because the Republicans are actually quite smart, which is like the second that you start like rioting streets. and stuff, you like delegitimize uh, de everything, all of the positive things. Like right. in a weird way, and I was thinking about this on my drive over here, this is the most that the United States have been unified. Like the fact that there shouldn't be political violence yeah. is the most unified that the United States has been in right. so fucking long. Maybe since like September 11th. Yeah, like, that's maybe. why everyone making a TikTok right now that like, damn, he missed should be arrested the same way January 6th people were. I don't see that on there's my a TikTok. Lot. Really? Really? Search there's a lot. You, you get a lot. Not only that, but there's people like one of the girl from Orange is the New Black and um, um, whatever said, like, we need to go kill Trump or like Amanda Seals, famous actress, said that was fake. That was staged. I grew up in Harlem. I know what gunshots sound like. Like there are people with followings, not just kids. And I, I think they should be punished. Yeah, I think that gets down like the slippery slope of free speech and, and whatnot. But Agreed. like maybe but but I do think that there's something to be said that there's no mass riots in the street. No, like it, it's like very well played on the side of the right to just right. be like, yeah, like we're just going to. But also they're hotter this. than ever. What are you yeah. going to protest? I exactly. know, they're all fucking easy. like, well, we just we're running this shit for the next four years. I mean, Democrats shoot themselves in the foot weekly. Yep. With dumb shit. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. But. 
And Republicans have never gotten any good momentum in like 20 years. I know, but they're I hot. Mean, they should be lighting off fireworks. They should be celebrating. They, I, think, I, I, I think they are. I think well, they're I like, know, I think behind, closed, guy. Beca- yeah. behind closed doors, all of the most powerful Republicans are very happy. Right, but I'm saying they're not going to riot. Why would you no. riot right now? Yeah. You won. Yeah. The election's over. Yeah. Yeah. Effectively, it's over. Right. Unless something. But I'm just saying, if, if, I mean, you're talking a millimeter away from like, Probably one of the most insane times in our country's history. Never. Ha- ha- oh, it would been. A, it would have been like a Franz Ferdinand, like butterfly effect type thing. It'd be right. really bad yeah. in this era of media, like where everything. Now you're going to see like someone got shot in Baltimore, and then someone. Oh my God, there's a guy. There's Kyle Rittenhouse is all over the fucking country. Oh, Everything's yeah. crazy. Yeah, and it's just going to snowball. I mean, the guy. You, you're like uh, went yeah. like this. Yeah, and it hit his ear. Yeah, it's it is. I can't wrap my head around. I don't think people appreciate that we were so close to absolute fucking chaos. We were like a chaos. couple centimeters away from complete instability across the country. And, right? and, and, yeah. and the world. And the world, yeah. But, yeah, but and more importantly, because the then if I'm China, right here, I'm yeah. in Taiwan tomorrow. I'm fucking everyone. I mean, this could have snowballed so. And, and I think what people forget is the reason why people have always been bullish on America is stability and more importantly political stability right that the fact that we never had to deal with these things like if you look at what's happening in you know in a lot of third world countries it's this (laughs) this is every day like the thing that you're uh, just like oh that guy's not gonna make it (laughs) if you if you go back to every inauguration day that at least i've been alive for they pride themselves on the peaceful transfer of power right yep that's like the thing. Right. And it's like, you have to just give it off. Yeah. You leave. Regardless yeah. of if it's your party or the other party. Right. Yeah. You give it off. Yeah. Well, like, and, and the other thing that and I- now I think we're at, you know, kind of danger of that. Yeah. I mean, like one of the things that I was sort of reading and catching up on is like, if you look at the fall of any major empire, the thing that precedes it by and large is like political instability that's somewhat coupled with violence. Yeah. Like there's- uh, you know, violent overthrowings of, you know, coups mm-hmm. of power and all of these things. And it's like kind of scary to see the cracks in America in this way, where it's like for the last, I guess, what is it, 60 years, 50 years or so, there's been generally what Anand was describing. It's like peaceful transfers of power. Right. All of these elections were by and large, like mostly fair. There's no violence around them. There's no people stopping from getting to polls or something. But you're increasingly seeing things happening in America right. that are very similar to things that are happening in like Central Africa or South America, South America or yeah, just right. places that are just completely. Yeah. But isn't that the CIA too? Yeah, 100%. <laughs> right. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> Yeah, but the coup, Sierra, the Sierra coup intelligence agency. Banana Republic. They love do, a coup. do you want to hear something insane? Is um, of course uh, that's what we do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> yeah. I, we don't do this for money. <laughs> I went to uh, I went to U.S. Special Forces Week in March, and I got to sit down like over beers, not like in a sort of formal or or work setting, but like over beers with people from a variety of three letter agencies. I'm okay. not going to like put them on blast here. And it was so crazy because I was like, what's your, what's your guys' favorite conspiracy theories? This is like somewhere I always like to go with my conversations. And I was like, yeah. you guys probably have some great ones. And they were like, we have like a really insane one, but like here, we'll tell it to you. It's that, um, there's going to be an assassination of Donald Trump. And I was like, oh, that's crazy. Like there hasn't been an assassination attempt on a president in Whatever. decades. Like, and, and I was like, so how is it going to go down? Like, what's the way that they're going to do it? And they're like, have you seen all the Boeing failures that have been happening around the, mm. the country? Uh. And I was like, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. And he's like, the deep state is facilitating those failures on Boeing planes because Trump flies around in a Boeing uh, business jet. So when it happens. And so when it happens, people are already preconditioned to the fact that this is like a freak accident and could have just happened right. out of anywhere. Right. Mm. And this was like three months. This was March, late March, early April. And they were like, this yeah. This year. This year. And they were like, yeah, we really believe that somebody's going to make an assassination. But they, that was their angle. It wasn't the 20 year old crawling on a roof or whatever. <laughs> that was probably the second option. Just one out. Yeah. yeah. The the maybe it's a good mechanic. <laughs> on the yeah. deep state Zoom call. They're like, yeah, oh, we're going to go with B. <laughs> yeah. His name's Thomas Crook. And uh, I don't know. Yeah, he's got bullied. He seems like an easy one. Yeah, apparently he registered Republican. So we're good. <laughs> <laughs> but the crazy thing is like in, in circles, like very well educated on sort of these sorts of topics, circles. This was like a, a non-zero potential thing that could happen. Which is insane. I mean, if yeah. I'm Donald Trump, I'm not flying. No. I, 
<laughs> you gotta do the John Madden. Nonetheless, the bus. he's flown three times since he got <laughs> shot in the ear. It's just crazy. Like the, how traumatic that experience would be to a normal person. And I also if he felt targeted. It's Teflon Don. I, I honestly think he doesn't care. He went and played a round of golf, and then he's in Milwaukee. No, I think he's like I think he couldn't be happier. I mean, he's probably <laughs> sketched out, right? But he's like, man, that is like, dude. If you're 78 and you're like getting I'm shot at, bullets, you're just like, whatever. <laughs> what do you I, care? He you're already on your last leg, but dude. I mean, AR-15. Put it like this: he's ear. he's officially officially. You know, he's a he was a president, so he was always going to be in the history books. That picture oh. is going to be in every history book forever. Sure. Like when people are studying ancient America yeah. 150 years from now. How it all collapsed. Like, show that picture. Yeah. I just think like if you study, like for me, like if you look at like the Jordan flu game. Or like Kobe <laughs> shooting the free throws after he blew his Achilles. Is it's very similar. It's super after similar. After an AR-15 to the fucking earlobe. I, is... I would argue in American politics and modern like, think about what pictures do you remember? Like, we always joke about George Bush throwing the the strike at uh, Yankee Stadium yep. after 9-11. Yep. Yep. You think about... The planes crashing into the towers. Yeah, but I'm yeah. saying, like, with the president image. Uh -oh. You know, like, the president saying, I hear you too. That was George Bush. Right? He, when right. he said in the rubble. Oh, yeah, yeah, the, yeah. 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 You know what I'm saying? Horn. Like, okay, George Bush had, like, two moments. Right. I would say... Obama's was killing oh, uh, Bin Laden. Yep, that picture. Yeah, right. where he's like on the phone. Like, yeah, yeah. Bill Clinton getting a blowjob. Um, <laughs> <laughs> just every time he was. But think about it. You're not even close. I mean, one of the most iconic images was um, George Bush dodging shoes. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> this guy took an AR-15 to the ear. That's what I'm saying. I'm talking about what are the most historic images of our lifetime. Not a president or even close. And there's nothing like nothing it. Nothing no. even kind of close. I don't even know who the presidents were in the 70s, so that didn't matter. No. And then you had Kennedy. You have that, but that didn't end well. Yeah. yeah. You, you don't really have many images of presidents doing... And you know what I was also thinking about? is like, you remember how the uh, for the Obama campaign, the Obey like yeah. thing yeah, was yeah. just like a massive Hope. driving force? Yeah. Um, right. This is like, this is Trump's equivalent of that. Because there is undoubtedly tens of billions of impressions on that singular photo oh, in yeah. the last 24 hours. It, it, there's no better advertisement. Like, you couldn't have dreamed it if you had all of the yeah, I mean, Biden like, and Kennedys <laughs> and all of those. So, <laughs> right, I, I right, just right, got right. a message from, like, a credible news source that uh, Trump denied excess Secret Service for the rally. Well, we don't know. I think we should wait until somehow if we ever learn what's true, because we don't know either way. It has been said that he was denied it. I'm sure it'll be said that he he denied it. Who knows? I think either way, I don't even think to me. I mean, what the fuck do I know? But like that seemed like a failure of. Like there were they were there. There were snipers on the roof. There was. And the word is, to Zach's point, is that those snipers were mainly focused also on a further distance than that. So that was actually a failure of like Local law police, enforcement yeah. and the guys with the shorter AR-15s and the. Like, I think Trump that was has outside to play of, the Secret Service card very carefully, and he cannot not support them. Yeah, They're still protecting smoking. him, right? Look what happened. No, but yeah. he, but it's his fans that are the ones who are saying this. He's never come out and said, "Yeah, you guys did right. a bad job." Yeah, it's everybody who supports him who are being like, "Yo, we got to protect he our guy." He gave him props already. Yeah, I think I, I don't think he could run the risk of no. maybe those three three chicks. <laughs> it's so crazy. I mean, just be <laughs> clear, like no, that video was really bad. I mean, come on. I mean, the fuck, really look bad. at the guy. It literally was like a Melissa McCarthy fucking. Right. Right. It looked like a key and peel. Paul Blart. It looked like <laughs> yeah. a key and peel bit. Don't you I mean, think if you're? Do you think that if if you're like Putin or Xi, you see that fist pump photo and you're like, fuck, fuck, we're done. <laughs> totally. <laughs> Can you give us back the old dude? Totally. <sighs> you you couldn't. But you also, could, if, you're the, if you're the democratic deep state, you're probably also like, fuck. Yeah, you're like, we got to go back to the <laughs> yeah. Boeing. Go back yeah. to the Boeing yeah. plane. Yeah. Yeah. The Boeing plane has What's to up go. with the landing gear? Because this ain't happening now. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and yeah, I think, I think like, I, I think it's insane that particularly around this person being Trump, we can say and talk like callously about him dying 
We've talked about it 25 times in this podcast. We would never talk that about any other president. Totally. Which I think is not. I mean, Shane Gillis has a really funny, like, stand up bit about it in his comedy special. I was special. about to bring that up to you. Yeah. 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 Shane Gillis. Oh, yes, Shane I watched it. Has a really funny. And, like, it. yeah, no. you're right. Like, no, uh, every other president, that's pretty, like, you don't really go there. You don't yeah. joke about that. Yeah. No. But, dude, they tried. And it, I mean, it's just like we joke about, like, damn, he has all these lawsuits and then he makes it to a UFC event. He's yeah. undefeatable. He, he is literally. If you want a president, like as a president, that's like the, in my opinion, one of the qualities that you want to rate the highest is right. literally just like Resilience. unstoppable. He'll run through brick walls right. regardless <laughs> of what's thrown at him. It's I actually mean, crazy. To be fair, th you know, forget it, whatever you think of his political <laughs> views. He actually defines what America's always been 100%. about. 100% resilience. Yeah. Correct. In the face of like the craziest <laughs> shit of all time. Yeah. I mean, I, who's a figure that's even close to this? There's nobody that they, nobody. they've tried to come at so much. And he, he's just been so unfazed. Like, it's he, he walks around every day like it's a normal day, no matter what's happened. <laughs> Dude, the guy's can, can you imagine? Is it good or bad? He, I, don't I don't know. I don't know. But I think after 18 holes today in Mar a Lago, he goes to the clubhouse. The stories he was telling oh, yeah. to the country club people, you wouldn't believe it. Yeah. You wouldn't believe it, guys. Oh, can you imagine? <laughs> he is on cloud nine. <laughs> I mean, dude, you still had to go golf. <laughs> you go I've, I've like had a bad bean and cheese burrito and canceled an 18 holes of golf. <laughs> you're not Trump. You're not America. You have no resilience. <laughs> what the but it's fuck? almost like it reinforces like his whole thing has always been. There's this like puppeteer class that exists behind the shadows that are like fucking over everybody. Basically, that yeah. was always his original running point. Right. And the fact that he just sort of takes all this stuff on the chin and just continues with life anyway, <laughs> it like reinforces the fact that he's like, oh, yeah, like I knew this was going to like, of course, like, duh, this was going to happen. I mean, like, was kill me. Yeah, of course. Like, why would they? Because we also <laughs> got to talk about here. Like the guy is 70, whatever years old. 78. It's not like. Like he didn't grow up in the streets. He's never been shot. Yeah. You no. know, like yeah. this is a first. <laughs> and, and you name me one 78 year old that can take an AR to the ear and just fucking and go golf. Bumps? Dude. No, the fist pump. With, when I saw that, I looked at my wife looked at me. She's like, what does that mean? Fight, but, fight, fight. I'm like, you know, goddamn well. But also they were like <laughs> rushing so him like, off. And hold like, on. Can we like. Like kind of pause okay. on everything which you guys are saying. I know you guys are big. We're not Trump pausing, lovers. but you can you can talk <laughs> big what, Trump lovers. But what? he still has like legislation abilities, and he's still going to legislate in ways that we probably won't agree. I, I don't. But, but we're not talking about that at the moment. Yeah, we're just we're talking, talking about, about seventy eight year old got shot in the head <laughs> and fucking golfed today. Agree, <laughs> but my point is, you can't just like you know. Parade around like, hey, well, no, no, he we should can, be the legislator of the country. No, no, no one said that. We can get back to election talk for the next five months. It's just today. Today. This fucking no, spectacle. No, it's crazy. No, no, of course what he did is crazy. But like, look, he stacks the federal courts. He stacks the Supreme he Court. He already did it. It's he's he's going to do it more. But the, th the thing is, it, it show, like the where I would push back on that is it shows like a mental fortitude that people are questioning from what's incumbently in place. Right. Agree. Yeah. That's like if fine. you can get shot in the air and like continue on, it's like at least your ability to make decisions on your own behalf is probably higher than what by what's going on. With and that. I, I want to add to that one thing that I like and keep in mind, I'm still just not voting. But um, is I think one of the president's main jobs is to just be like the face of the country like, and yeah. still confidence and, and embody our values. And even though I don't share a, a bunch of values with Trump. Getting shot in the fucking ear and fist pumping is makes me feel Pretty super badass. American. No, and but I, yeah. like, you actually have to anything. like kind of dig a little deeper. No, we don't. That's the beauty of America. I don't think we don't so. actually have to I don't, dig You do. I don't totally no. think so. And I think that there's more harm than people talk about with having, having sort of a bumbling old man as the face of our country. I, I think that that does more damage. What deep, than, well, how, dig, how deep are you digging with Sleepy? No, I think the federal courts is the most important thing. I don't, people don't care anymore. Can I ask I you know, a people don't actually understand it. Can I ask I you an honest, honest question? Yep. What has Biden done that you're like really proud of during his term? I think the infrastructure bill was great. What I does think, that mean? What about what it? What did he do? What about it? Be more like specific. specific. What happened? How did it help I you? mean, he, there's potholes on the way. I must pop my tire. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he infused money to basically help. Build out American infrastructure, which is at right, its all-time low. Planes trillion. are falling but from the sky. But what changed? 
What do you mean? What changed? Like, um, go more like, re, like what happened? What changed because of that? I think he created a lot of jobs. I mean, okay. unemployment's at all time low. Inflation's would, decreased by like. I would push back on the the jobs thing. I think that they're jobs. Job, fake news. You know that. You, it's not, you they're said not fake. Me, you know I think fake. it's. I think that they're not fake news. I just don't think that they're very good jobs. Aren't what a lot of them government jobs too? I mean, isn't that like well? Government jobs is like go government's one of the largest employers in the country, and that just, just seems like cheap contributes to national debt like an insane amount. But I, would I say, think to say like Biden didn't do good, no, is, no, 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 is no. False. I, and that's why I don't want this to get lost because I honestly want to. I mean, how am I proud of? I mean, unemployment's at all time low. Okay, you like the stock market up? Stock market's on fire. Okay, uh, what do you think is going to happen with Trump? It's gonna inflation be uh, <laughs> has been slayed. Right. So let me ask you this. And so I honestly am trying to understand you. Here. Inflation like, do being you think slayed that, is not necessarily Biden. But let me ask you, let me ask you. Do you think so that you could, if Trump were president, you guys would be like, oh yeah, the guy that did the fist pump and the <laughs> the flag, he's the one that slayed inflation. You lost me until you, you said fist pump. Fucking... I was like, oh, yeah, I will. Uh, yeah. No, here's my honest question. I, I, I mean this honestly. This isn't for a podcast. I want to understand. Yeah. Do you think that Trump will ruin those things? No, I don't think so. Okay, so what I want to understand, what has Biden done uniquely that Trump will mess up that, that you really... I was awake to the whole debate. <laughs> no, I think, I think... He was awake look, to I the think, whole debate. I think Biden will help um, gun laws. 100%. He hasn't made an impact. Well, you, I mean, he can't because the Republicans he, control the Senate. What's he going to do, the gonna do in the next House four years? Election. They're What's, gonna get What's he going to do in the next four years? Push further. Right. What else? Gun laws, abortion laws. Right. I think abortion uh, laws is the most credible one. There's going to be uh, Supreme Court justices that are pretty old that may pass. Right. And he gets to appoint the next ones. Right. Those are very important. Okay. Makes sense. Yeah, but those are not things that he's like necessarily accomplished. They're like the promise of things. I'd say that the most viable one is the stock market. Stock market has been doing really well. But then again, it's like but what five. What did Biden have to do with that? I don't think. Any, I don't think much. I think that it, he gets to benefit from it, though. I but think that's every president. Yes, you I agree. Complain. I don't think Trump had. Anything I know to that's do with why I didn't say Bill Clinton got the greatest economy. Know, that's well, not, the question was, what did he do? I think tr Trump provided stimulus in a like really dark time that kind of jump started. Well, I, I think everyone, every country provided that. So I'm, I can't give Trump the credit of that stimulus during COVID. Yeah. Because every country did that, and I think he had no choice. Yep. I don't give any economic credit to Trump other than he probably had his neck on fucking Powell's mm -hmm. foot know, on neck, keeping yeah. mm -hmm. keeping right. interest rates down. Right. Other than that, like I don't. Think I just think my point here is I think the what they portray for the country as the face of the country is more important than we think. Cause I think a lot of these things don't have anything to do with them and they don't really do. Yeah. Historically presidents have done nothing. Like do they, do, are they the ones affecting the economy? No. Is he the one taking care of inflation? No, he made it worse. Are they the one? No. But like what you represent as a country, I think means a lot. You gotta look good. And I think I'm not saying Trump is the best guy, but what I am saying, and I know this will get taken out of context, but is Fist pumping with a bloody face after taking an AR-15 to the ear is a value of perseverance in a human being that is unmatched <laughs> that I appreciate. It's the same as seeing Kobe on the free throw line yeah, yeah, and fucking Jordan at the flu game gym, times they're 10. probably like, that picture's got to be on the... Every gym. I we'll see you tomorrow. Just... I don't know. Yeah. But, I mean, it's just when it comes to perseverance and I, then, and then I, as I opposed think, to a guy who no, I, I get stays it. awake so, during the debate no, so and they're I, like look at how strong he is no i get i get what you're saying obviously but you have to have values right like if you have conservative values right. trump's your guy if you have liberal values biden's your guy right that's it i don't to be honest with you it's more muddy than that for me keep in mind i'm not voting i've said it loud and clear it's what i i'm not voting but it's kind of like this at the expense of that like my, my values are more in line with democratic values for sure. But, but it goes far? downstream. That's the problem. Huh? That's what people don't understand. What? That who the president is, the it's downstream in terms of who they appoint in everything. Right. I just think that what I agree with you and I know that that affects a lot and I do, but I just, what I've seen 
is that everyone freaked out that Trump was going to absolutely burn the country alive and Biden was going to save it. And that's not what happened. And I do see that we're in two wars by proxy that we weren't before. And I do see that everyone's talking about China invading Taiwan. I do see that people talking about nuclear war. And I do see, and I didn't see that. All I saw was Trump is bad. Trump is going to do this during his time. And it's just made me take a step back and be like, what was actually better or worse? How much of it was like fear of what this guy's going to do? And by the way, the, 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 the narrative has always been with Democrats is that Trump is going to become emperor. Yeah, that's false. He did leave <laughs> after four years. Right. And I'm sure Thomas <laughs> believed he was going to. No, but my point is like, if you want to really go granular, it's like, the federal judge in Mississippi. Young kid gets caught with a bag of weed. Right. 20 years in prison. Right. But that's, I mean, that's what Kamala Republican Harris did president. for a living. She, she was, I don't support Kamala Harris. I know, Harris. but that's part, see, there's, that's what part I'm saying of the party. is, there's she's cracks the ticket. in the, I think she's a fraud. Right, but she's you, a good you, chance she would be president. There's a good president. chance she'll be president. She might be president. If, but my point is like, you have to think about like the downstream effects. I know, but then you're, th you're talking about right. Kamala Harris is a downstream effect. I just don't see like what has, I don't know, man. And I think a lot of these democratic, like feel good laws have caused a lot of harm. I take probably more serious than anything politically, just me personally, what I've seen. The number one issue for me is crime because it has impacted my life. Yep. And it is really wild and scary and crazy. Yeah, you can't walk out your house at night. And that is a democratic agenda. And I'm not saying it's the only thing and so fuck them and now I'm fucking MAGA. That's not what I'm saying. But I'm just saying that like everything isn't quite what it seems and it's really muddy. And it's like, yeah, there's some things I don't like over here, but there's some things I really don't like over here either. Yeah, I think that's the problem is that like it's very easy. You can listen to the last hour of us speaking and just call us... MAGA. Oh, oh, they will. Yeah, no, not me. Which is fine. Yeah, not on it, not on it. And and, and come on, after that fist pump, we can have one MAGA episode. Yeah, and and I think <laughs> I think like similar. Like I'm probably I will vote in the election. I'll probably I'll probably vote Kennedy for president. I'll be honest. That's yeah, that would be the most legend. Yes. Yeah, and so but it just doesn't. Yeah, I'm not, I, I, I think I, the real the real thing is like obviously the president matters deeply, but the local elections matter more. 100%. So right now the DA, they're in a dead heat. Gascon and the George uh, Soros figured that out a long time ago. Right. Yes yeah. to him. So all the billionaires basically were like, "Oh yeah, let's just like king make all the local uh, politicians to, you know, present our views." Right. And that's actually more important. I agree, but I have a. Um I have another thought that I don't know if it'll translate well is like, I think the president, keep in mind, my most important uh, opinion here about the president is I wish neither of them were the option. I wish we had reasonable options. That is my number one opinion. But I do think that the president sets the tone. And if people start to see more of a tone of, let's say in the case of crime, like laws mattering again. I think it ch it's the only chance you have of politicians or DAs on the local level being like, oh, people care about law now. They didn't before because the left agenda was anything. Let's just run wild and whatever. But I think there's like a, it's the same way trends happen. Like we come from the fashion industry, the same way in that, same way in music. This is hot. This idea is hot. Now, like you said, in investing, everyone's jumping on it. I think if the idea becomes hot for laws to matter, you'll see sentiments around DAs and things change. So don't you think the last eight years have just made you jaded on the federal level? Meaning and that- the local though. I don't think I was ever not jaded. I think as soon as I learned about it, I realized it was kind of- yeah, yeah, because like I'm at a place where I follow politics for the better part of 22 to 23 years pretty closely. And once you kind of pierce the veil, you realize it's all nonsense. Right. And now you're just like, why am I focusing on this? Right. But there's, to me, there's one, not to be repetitive, there's one thing that matters and that is the tone. And I think the tone of lawlessness and, um, some of the ways that some of these like DEI things and those things have gotten really crazy. And I think it's just gotten a little, 
crazy. And I think that does matter. And I think a strong, like I, I do miss, even though I'm young for this, but like America being about exceptionalism and greatness and where great people come and we bring great. But don't uh, you think that was flawed at that point? No, but you, you just last up last week here, you said American sports suck. Yes. You know why? Cause we let everyone fucking feel good. People have to fucking lose. I told my kid, my kid starts a camp tomorrow, Arsenal soccer camp. Mm -hmm. I said, those Arsenal. kids are going to be fucking better than you. Be ready. Right. And I, we went out and played. We went to the park. We played, we played. I shoved him to the ground. I pushed him. <laughs> right. I, I made, I made him cry. Right. Cause I was like, these kids think they're going to play at Arsenal. Whether they're not, it's a, but it doesn't matter. Well, no one's going to play. But, but the point yeah. is, is that like it's it's resilience. It's yeah, they're, about not, they're all going to be people from other countries. That's yes, and, but, but my point, <laughs> yeah, because we we want everyone to feel good, and right. that is not. Right. We should not make that a part of the agenda. You should fucking lose. Not only do I think we should do that, I think it's actually a really fucked up thing to do to kids. Because yes. let's say, take Dom, for instance. You yeah. give Dom participation trophies his whole life, blah, blah, blah. One day he's going to be faced with the reality that he's not good at anything. Yeah. And he doesn't know why. And now he's lost and he has no and calling. Like fucking Thomas Crooks. Being hard on people <laughs> and pushing them, to, showing them what it takes is in some ways, the nicest thing you can do for a yes. person. And I think America has a message that being second, being third, being fourth is fine. And I think that's toxic. And I think long term, it's but, really bad. But, but the, 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 the actual thing is, is that and which is very dangerous. What I think people have communicated to kids is that you're not as good because you are this. You're not as smart. Like oh, yeah. not they, they go to minority a children and say, you know what? We know that you're not that smart. So we're going to carve out some space for you at Harvard. It actually propagates racism. In a yes. Way. Yeah. It's yeah. way worse. It's yeah. so bad. Yeah, You have a good take on this. So. I, and I think, I think the problem is, is whether it's sports, whether it's academics, whatever it is, you cannot go to kids and say when they lose, right. you lost because of your, heritage your genetics no you lost because you fucking suck you didn't work as hard yes and i literally deal with that i i i tell when my when my kids lose i tell them that kid was better than you yeah, and, and i'm not trying to make him feel bad i'm just trying to say if you want it you're gonna have to just be better than this kid that's it so and that's this, a tough take this is a different point than what drama and i were talking about but i'd love to build on what you're saying i've watched wimbledon the last two weeks like you have as well the American kids all choked. Of course they did. That's because of your agenda. You're a, your people. Your people <laughs> caused the choke. choke. <laughs> yeah. No, that's your weak kids, America. That's weak America. You're trying to weaken America. I'm not weak in America. You want a president that could barely walk and talk. <laughs> he know? is weak. And he, then we're all he, pretending he's not. He we're giving weak. him a participation trophy. Do you want to Taylor Fritz, Blake Shelton? It's because of Biden. All these guys. Biden caused Taylor Fritz They salutes. literally could not. Compete yeah. in, the in other countries. Of the Democratic agenda. You have to kill other people to win. Yeah, no, you know it's... Djokovic. He has a famous quote. He's like, "There are bombs coming over when I was seven right. years old, right. and I wanted to like, you know, win Wimbledon. Right. So I bombed these aces. So he's like, I'm going to crush everyone. Right. You know what I, I think that is like important to really think about is that like, you know, United States does have enemies. I think that that's something that we sort of forget uh, when we're sort of like myopically focused on what's happening in the country. Yeah. There are groups of people that are like very qualified out there that are trying to like destroy our way of life. And that's like not an exaggeration. I think if you look at like people like Putin or Xi, they're very, very strong figures. Putin's like an ex KGB agent. He does judo. He hunts bears. He's like, he's like a very strong, powerful figure and people can rally behind that. Same with Xi. Xi is like from some like basically small little village, middle of nowhere, basically climbed and clawed yeah. his way all the way up. That's why everyone liked Obama. He came from nothing. That's yeah. why all the But fucking... they also have no fear of uh, getting replaced, right? Yeah, I think that that's, I think that there's actually a world in which sort of like, um, like having these figureheads that are like so nationalistic are important for a country's arc. Maybe not forever, but I do think that that like, there are times when like, when the USSR exploded and like it, it went back to Russia, it was fucked up. And he basically came in and cleared it back all up and basically made Russia like a superpower. Same with China. China lost a bunch of territory. Similar thing with Xi. Um, I just think that like on the world stage, when everybody is basically effectively a chess piece, you want to have the strongest chess piece possible leading sort of the ranks behind them. And so 
I think that like I actually think just to interrupt, but like I think we've had that chess piece up to up until Biden. Yes, I agree. I think Trump was that. I think Obama was that. George W. George Bush was that to a certain definitely, extent. Definitely, yeah. he just was bombing countries for no reason. Yeah. Yeah. He set everyone in their place. Yeah. Bill Clinton was that. Like I actually felt very confident that all the previous presidents were that. I agree, and I think that a lot of the people around the world that are looking to sort of like, you know, uh, disintermediate American way of life, basically look at what we have now and are not afraid of the ramifications of their actions, which is why you see this Russian war going so long, which is why you see increased war games around Taiwan, which they're not worried about um, basically any sort of repercussions because of Biden. And I think that like say what you want about either candidate. You do want somebody who's this like strong, powerful, like every successful civilization in all of history has had like one singular. It's like right. Julius Caesar, Napoleon, all of these things. Countries get better when you have like a very strong central figure. I mean, yeah. to, to make it even simpler, in businesses, CEOs represent that. Yep. We we've we've seen so many CEOs in our adult lifetime who are like, is that guy even smart? But when they get on the stage and they talk, you're like, oh, okay, I get it why that guy is in charge. Right. He just gives the confidence that they have it all figured out. Yep. That it, we were in a test uh, text thread today with someone that said, man, I was talking to this guy about this company. He said he was going to go public soon. And he, he failed. But like the CEO gave him the confidence that he thought the company was going to go public. Yeah. And I think that matters. It matters huge. It certainly does matter. And I think that like, again, if you t look at sort of like a more global perspective, America is not, this is not happening in America in a vacuum. Like if you look at France, you look at Germany, you look yeah. at all these European countries, they are shifting towards like directionally the principles that Donald Trump and people on the right yeah. sort of embrace. Because everyone like, tried participation trophies and it didn't work. Yep. Like well, everybody tried like this like effect. overly kind. Here's the, here's the, here's the harsh reality of the world. There's no way everyone can win. Yep. Someone will always have to lose. Yep. It sucks. It does not feel good to watch people lose, but they fucking lose all the time. Yep. Like when I drive around and I'm like I'll see a homeless person, I see them like and I'm like what is the difference between me and them? And I don't know if there's a difference. Right. And it, it, it may have just been right. my balls felt, you know. You the circumstance, know. yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's very simple. And I think it's very sad that that's what happens. And I think people generally have empathy and want to figure out a solution where no one should suffer. Right, well, but here's what else I miss. Happen, what else I miss is that, like, excluding homeless people and, and very severe things, the thing that you have to accept is – and I know this is hard to hear coming from the bubble in LA by living in America, you won. Yeah. Like if you really want to look at like the life lottery, yeah. everyone that's able to listen to a podcast or whatever won on such oh, yeah. a big if level. You listen yeah. to but this instead, podcast, you're one percenter. But instead we are telling everyone that like, well, no, here's how you lost. Here's how it's not fair for you. Here's how it's not fair. As opposed to like, America is great. The greatest people come here by being born here. We're all so lucky. It's this like fucked up. We, we've prioritized um, a quality of outcome versus a quality of like standards. Right. Which is a, is a horrendously scary thought. Well, it, it was because it always optimizes to the worst person that you include in that cohort. Right. Right. Yeah, it always leads about, to like yeah. death and destruction. I mean, the worst dictators Mao, all these people tried to get equality of outcome. Yeah. And you have to. That's what happens in communism. Like, that's what they try to do in communism. That's in all of these, like, pretty scary societies. But don't you think it's scary that it's happening at the Ivy Leagues? Yeah. Very scary. But the fact that Harvard and Penn and Yale. Because they lowered their standards of what they accept. They I think it makes sense, though, right? Because they're operating it as a business. No, but the, the kids that. No, I'm saying the kids that actually attend the school. Yeah. They're the ones parading around a lot of these like right. super progressive causes. Yeah, I think forget Palestine, scary. Israel. Like, let's put that aside. Yeah, but they think everyone should be. Yeah. I've got some crazy conspiracy I think theories it's on that too. Really scary. Yeah. yeah. You think that that's uh, some like uh, foreign country influence? Well, I think that, that I think it's undoubted, un undoubtedly true that 
the some of the largest donations at all of our Ivy schools are from families that are not American, right? Whether they're Chinese or Indian or Russian or whoever, there's a variety of different interests operating within our. Uh, oh, that's so scary. Like even like I, I was having this conversation with um with somebody who's like very sort of uh, tapped into all this stuff. And he was basically like in every single, there's a, a specific middle Eastern nation that has basically made large donations to every sort of like big institution in the country mm -hmm. because they specifically want an Islamic studies uh, course to be able to be taught there right. with a very specific orientation towards like how Islam yeah, is interpreted. A long game. Yeah. And right. so I think that that sort of thing is actually happening. Like, you know, uh, my alma mater, I went to NYU, NYU, you know, they had a bunch of Chinese foreign students uh, attending NYU. All of a sudden, there's a, a campus in Shanghai. Like, there's, you know, right. there, that that repeats itself across because people know if you like sort of start at the grassroots, yeah, yeah. then these very intelligent people with really good degrees are going to go on and infiltrate right. high levels of society, right. and they'll take these perspectives with them and sort of infiltrate them into whatever they're doing. And so, I think that there's like a whole other world which we can talk about where it's like there's a brainwashing of. The American youth via TikTok, via school, via and but that is why do you, I think what do you the tone... think the uh, cause of eighteen to nineteen year olds at all these uh, prestigious Ivy League schools that have kind of communist beliefs? He's telling you it's self hatred. Oh, he's telling you. No, I know what he's saying. We, right. We've also gone over that, but it's well, like a self hatred thing. I, I'm in a place of privilege. It's like, Ooh. I'm in a place of privilege. I shouldn't be. I hate my dad. My dad's a lawyer at Skadden Arps or some massive law firm <laughs> yeah. in New York City. I hate him. He like stands for everything. I grew up with a multicultural group of people. That's who I am. They like grab onto things that are, um, I think, uh, things that like fight no, against what, what they grew up with. What he was saying was yeah. basically who's funding it. My question is how the kids are actually getting influenced. Well, he's telling you that too. I think that there's a wave. I think it's, to me, it's a common two things happening at once. There's a wave of that being the popular thought. Victimhood is very popular right now. And I think that there's a self-hatred of like, wow, I'm a victimizer in some ways. Let me see how and blah, blah, blah. I think also that the teachers and the whatever have allowed it and have also encouraged it. I yeah, mean, I there's a lot. It. I talked to a friend recently, you guys probably know this, who has a kid who's sub 10 years old in school in LA in a nice school. And like, they are teaching them about, you know, maybe kind of questionable um, LGBT things a little too early. Or there was one kid in the class who identified as an animal and the teachers let them have a, a bowl in the class or like these things are actually, uh, I don't even want to say because I don't even want to get close to outing. Because if it's a school thing, it's going to get outed on this yeah, bucket. Yeah, and um, but and and then like some a, of the teachers domesticated or wildlife. Wild. Okay. And some of the <laughs> some of the other parents complained because this kid was making animal noises, and and I thought that was like How media. Old was the kid? Sub ten is all I'll say. Okay. Um, and I thought that was like the media. Maybe that happened at one school and they were blowing it out of proportion. But that is happening. And I think like all the way we're reinforcing some really questionable thoughts. And yeah. and then to Zach's point, self-hatred. Then to Zach's point, if there is outside influence trying to fracture and just make our country chaotic. And that's where a lot of donations are coming from or whatever. I mean, I don't know. You pick your pick your percentage of which one of those things it is I think I'm, even, I'm gonna i'm gonna once i can donate i'm gonna brainwash everyone to fantasy football that's fair they're gonna be like damn america just cares patrick about mahomes. fantasy football patrick <laughs> mahomes everywhere yeah <laughs> every school patrick mahomes institute of math right that's why i think when you see a guy <laughs> bleeding from the face with an american flag in the back oh, pumping his fist you're like that's us what, so i'm at, yeah i, I, I think, think an even simpler long. point though on D drama's point is that like i think that we're the youth specifically are conditioned to like prefer the underdog in almost every instance mm, absolutely. where it's like you you've kind of been growing up to seeing like you always kind of like give m much more props to the person who's like coming up from underneath than the people who are already at the top and i think that that when when you sort of abstract that away across like a variety of different things you're constantly like going for like black lives matter palestine you're you're, you're supporting these ukraine you're like supporting the ones that don't seem like that they should win and i think that that's like a very pervasive thing too where it's like they might not even necessarily believe 
they, they just hate the establishment. Like, I think that there's actually right. yeah, a that's, very, that's yeah. always like been the cop is automatically bad. The yeah. cop that's was automatically bad. That's, yeah, that's a 60s since, Vietnam. But this is what I think it. is crazy that we all just sort of ate is like, um, like you just said about Black Lives Matter. The fact that the BLM um, actual organization like sort of took all the money and bought houses and things. And everyone just knows that. But nobody like we just ate that. Yeah. Everyone ate it. It's yeah. like that to me is the worst form of criminal activity, like preying on people's true yeah. uh, desire to make things right and to play on that victim thing. And then to exploit that or to that's fucking crazy. Uh, I mean, right. I agree. I mean, is that out of pocket? No, I agree. No, it's not. It's it's not a pocket. It's I mean, true. It happened. And I think there should be accountability for all things. Like what, what, Zach is our resident black so uh, podcaster. <laughs> what I think what's scary, and I think if I'm going to make a little jump and go all the way back to why I'm mad that the um, Trump and Biden things aren't being treated as fair is because I feel like the Democrats lately have been doing that a lot. It's a playbook of like play victim, play virtuous, play the better person, and then don't you know, get elected, make the money, do all the stuff in the background and don't ever talk about it. And I just think that's a scary. Yeah. I, I agree. You know what I mean? You see a guy get shot in the head and fist pump on stage with an American flag. Of course you get a little fired up. I'm not saying I'm voting for the guy. Okay. Yeah. I, I, I literally, <laughs> so you I, love him. I just think it's fucking crazy. Come I think on. I, yeah. I think the whole thing is crazy. But when I saw the picture, I was like, it's funny because my wife and I were talking. She's like, are you going to vote for him? Yeah. And I was like, I don't know, but that's a badass picture. I mean, that, if that <laughs> happened to Kim Jong-un over the weekend, I would have been like, damn, he's a badass. Yeah, it, it could happen to anyone. It's crazy. Yeah, it could happen to anyone. All right, well. All right. Yeah. Uh, that's it, right? Yeah. There's nothing else that matters. By the way, anyone want to hear about the average annual sales of uh, restaurants? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> how, how much time are we at? We're like oh, man. way too long. All right. All right. Well, listen, <laughs> um, this is what I'll say. I know everyone's going to want to call us MAGA, so the best place to do that is on YouTube. Yeah. Uh, In the comment section. <laughs> yeah. That's where we'll see it. So if you want to make fun of us for being MAGA, uh, head on over to Group Chat Pod. Group Chat Pod on YouTube. Zach, any closing statements? Um, loser of the week, mainstream media. Big time. You know what else you really saw in an event like this is like the delay between like Biden wasn't even willing to say it was a, an assassination attempt. Like when it felt like, OK, yeah. this is already way old news. Yeah, I think that my 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 last parting thought is that, you know, people should spend more time and support podcasts like this where people are having legitimate discussions versus right. mainstream media where there's yeah. a variety of different um reasons that the real truth isn't being told. So right. I, I think it matters where you get your information from. You should choose wherever that is, but I think it makes a difference. Yeah. Yep. Get it from group chat pod. All right, everyone. Uh, have a great week. Good I mean, fucking luck. Yeah, good luck out there, man. <laughs> it's it's going to be a crazy. We got the D, uh, RNC. RNC this week. Yeah. Oh, right. geez. Yeah, it's going to yeah. be even crazier next week. All right. Uh, see you guys later. <laughs> we'll see you Wednesday. <laughs>